check one, two, three, four, check. Good evening, church. Would you guys stay with us as we worship the Lord together? Come on.
just begin to worship him. Slain 
as atonement for us to the Son who overcame all the power of death. Yes, we praise. Sing for the stripes. For the stripes, for the wounds, for the beating you wore, for the tears, for the blood that was willingly poured, for the merciful. I just want us to press in just a little bit more in this moment. We're gonna keep worshiping and we're gonna, we're gonna keep receiving from the Lord, but I want us to take that step to receive. I want us to take that step out of our seat. If you guys wanna come down to the altar, if you wanna bow down, if you wanna raise your hands, we just worship you, God. We exalt you. Just a few more moments. Just a few more moments. We press into you, Lord. Lord, we seek your face. Oh, Jesus. Lord, we crown you. We crown you, King of kings. The Lord of lords.
just a little bit more. Just a little more. just the voices. Yes, we crown you. We fall face down. We worship. We all cry out. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. We crown you. We crown you. We fall face down. Holy, 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 holy,
Your power is already here in this place. Holy Spirit, we want you to have your way tonight. We want you to come any way you want to, Holy Spirit. This is your house. We are your people. We bless your name, Father God. We bless your name. Oh, Jesus, be lifted up and exalted this evening. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, our hearts are full of expectation tonight. Our hearts are full of expectation because as we sing tonight, Jesus, he's the faithful one. It's his nature. It's his character. He can be nothing but faithful. He can be nothing but trustworthy. It's his nature. It's his character. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Father God, we want you to be high and lifted up tonight. We set our gaze on you, the Holy One, the Mighty One, the Gracious One, the Merciful One. We set our gaze on you. 
Tonight we come boldly before your throne of grace in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Be lifted up tonight, Lord. Be lifted up tonight. his name praise his name tonight we're going to feast on the lord we're going to feast on his word amen church praise god praise god just before we're seated i just want to invite you would you take a moment just greet someone to the left and to the right of you share your name maybe you're from out of town let us know where you've come from Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen, church. God is good. Amen, church. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. My name is Karen Petfield. I'm the discipleship pastor here, and it's so wonderful to see you here this evening. And we just want to give you a warm welcome. Maybe you're a guest, and this is your first time here, or you're a regular attendee, or maybe you're with us via live stream, and we just welcome you in the name of the Lord, and we are looking forward to the good things that God has in store here tonight. We would love the opportunity to connect with you, and you can help us do that if you would just take out your phones and text the word REACH to our church landline. It's 914-761-3361. And when you text REACH, we are going to um, give you a link. It's a link to our tree link. And on there we have information about all of our upcoming events and activities. And so um, we just bless you with that. Also, if you are new to REACH Church, after the service tonight, we just invite you to stop by one of our hello stations. They're at either of our entrances. We just have a small gift for you, and it's our way of saying thank you for being here tonight. Uh, to our guests, if you are a guest, uh, but you attend another church, we're just happy to have you with us here during Revive 23. And may you bring back with you the fire that you received this weekend. Bring it back to your church body. Amen. <laughs> As a reminder, Revive 23 is a full weekend of revival services, and we will continue these services tomorrow, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m., so we welcome you to come to that. And lastly, did you know that one of the, mo one of the most effective tools we have for sharing our faith is our testimony? Amen? And uh, so we are inviting you. We would love to hear what God has done for you during Revive 23 weekend. Last night, this morning, tonight, tomorrow morning. And um, so you can do this by completing a short online form. It's available through the tree link, but it's also uh, the QR codes are posted throughout the campus. And we would love to hear from you as so we invite you to, to take part in that. And also, if you would like to give, offering can be given at the close of the service. We have receptacles at the back doors. And we just uh, want to say thank you to those who um, have just been so faithfully giving to the tithe, giving to missions. And if you would love to give a love offering to Pastor Ivan and his ministry, you can do that as well. Just designate it in your offering or, or if you're doing online giving, just designate it in your online giving. And we will make sure that those uh, that, that love offering goes to Pastor Ivan. Now, it is... It is my pleasure to welcome to the platform Pastor Ivan. God bless you. God bless everyone. Are you guys happy to be here? Yes. Are you hungry? Yes. You know, from where I am from, we're a hungry generation. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Uh, if we can put the first picture up. I want to give honor where honor is due. It's my beautiful wife and uh, 
my pastor. <laughs> and uh, we stand on the shoulders of them that went before us, and I want to honor my pastor. He's written many, many good books. Uh, those of you that received deliverance, um, I want to highly encourage you, get a hold of this book right here. It's called Fight Back, okay? You have to learn how to walk in dominion, okay? You God didn't call you to go from deliverance to deliverance to deliverance to deliverance. No, God has called you to dominion, okay? That's what, that, was, that was the original plan, the original design of God from the garden. It says take dominion over every creeping thing, you know? Yes. So those of you that receive deliverance, uh, these are available. Fight back. Uh, learn how to walk in your freedom because prayer line can get you can get some freedom in you, but prayer time, you got to learn, learn how to fight. Uh, those of you that maybe are still seeking deliverance, this is a great book for you, Break Free. You know, get, uh, get the, uh, the book, the knowledge in it. Uh, another one, Host the Holy Ghost. This is the newest copy that my pastor has wrote. And uh, there's one one book over there, it's called Single, Ready to Mingle. For those of you that, you know, ready to mingle. Let me tell you something. Dating is, from, dating is when you're getting ready to marriage, to get married, okay? Because if you ain't ready, uh, you can easily pick up some demons. <laughs> Just being real. Just being real. Uh, but marriage is God's plan. He designed it. And uh, we need to equip ourselves, you know, we, we need to equip ourselves, get ready, prepare, and, and single, ready to mingle for those that are, you know, thinking about that step. Get that book and then uh, fast forward. Um, if you don't, never maybe fasted, you don't, you don't know how to fast, my pastor, I mean, he, he fasted 40 days, okay? I, I haven't fasted 40 days. I mean, look at my body. <laughs> but he did, I mean, he looked scary, <laughs> But, man, I, I, incredible, okay? But God has given them grace because, you know, when you go on a longer fast, make sure you, God led you into that, okay? And learn how to get in, get out, and all that information, and uh, it's, it's a great, great, great book. And so those are available. And can we put the next picture up today? They announced that they're having a baby. Uh, they were believing for 13 years, okay? So this is not a small thing, okay? This is not a small thing for 13 years. And so today uh, they announced it. Um, Pastor Lana is about 13 weeks. And the next two slides, if we can quickly put them up. One, you can scan this code, uh, QR code. More, more information about the book and the other code. My pastor also has written a lot of material online. There's a lot of curriculums. I, I'm, your, your pastor is mentioning that your church has been going through some of them, but you can get a hold of that. And some, most of those resources are free online, so if you're not able to afford the book, uh, you can get it for free. Now, before we play the next video, we have annual race to deliver conferences where we live in Washington State. Uh, people fly from different parts of the world, literally, literally, and they come uh, to receive healing, deliverance, breakthrough, salvation, what, however it is. And so here's a little promo. It's happening in November 3 to 5, so it's really, really close. But, uh <laughs> as well as 
invasion of God's kingdom. There was a guy named Nehemiah. He had asthma since birth. And there, on our first conference, God healed him. He's still healed till this day. I remember years later, on the Race to Deliver conference, there was a young lady that was brought on the wheelchair from a different state. She actually rented a wheelchair. She had an accident which rendered her paralyzed from neck down. And there at that conference, Jesus Christ touched her and she was healed. I can't tell you how many people have been delivered from demons, curses have been broken. Parents who brought their children who didn't believe in Jesus and they met Jesus after they encountered the power of God of healing and deliverance. Now, let's go and see where this year's race to deliver going to be at. This is the place where the race to deliver conference will take place this year, Tri-Cities Convention Center. The race to deliver conference is free of charge. Everyone is welcome, but registration is required. So go to HungryGen.com and register today for this amazing event. And I can't wait to see you at Race to Deliver. Amen. Amen. So everyone is welcome. It's free of charge, but you have to pay for your travels. <laughs> um, pastor mentioned that um, there was a lady, her name is a girl named Julia. She got into a car accident. She was actually from the East Coast. She was driving to the mall, got T-boned, was paralyzed from the neck down, and her parents brought her, to the, brought her to the conference. And on the second day of the conference, God healed her. She started to walk. But the interesting thing that the faith that she carried before she even came was actually pretty incredible. You know, her parents, they wanted to buy her a wheelchair, but she says, Dad, don't buy me this wheelchair because if you buy me this wheelchair, this is going to be my condition. And she's like, I'm going to believe God. Dad's like, Julia, you're paralyzed. <laughs> How are we going to get you there? So they agreed to borrow or rent a wheelchair. So the faith that she already carried on and, and inside, and if you, knew, if you knew Julia, she's such a mellow and quiet person, just like, like, like that faith that was inside of her, she was just like, so like, like the way she did, shares her testimony, yeah, this, this guy healed, you know, paralyzed from the neck down, yeah, no biggie. <laughs> but uh, if we can, what's the next, what's, what do we have next? Oh, before we play that video video, this is where uh, we live, okay? Why? It's because we've had people call us and say, hey, where are you guys? And like, where are you? We're in Washington, D.C. <laughs> You're on the other side. <laughs> so Washington State lives over there. We're eastern Washington. We're not in Seattle. We're three and a half hours away, so eastern Washington, but you are welcome to join us. And the next video is actually that Julia girl sharing her testimony we can play it. On November 27th, 2017, I was brought by Christ to the Rocky Road Deliver Conference. I was able to get a hand in my stomach and got an upstate therapy. My God was going to do a lot. I prayed for healing of my elbow and two teeth. He prayed for healing of a shrub on the side of my mouth and my altitude and prayed for a tumor in my ears. Here I am a preacher at the Anchor Hospital. And here I am praying, trying to be a good person. Can we play the next? I was a part of the Friday Fire Healing Series where I received total healing of joint pain. Precious Holy Spirit, I ask that your anointing would locate Risha right now. Father, I speak to those hands. Be healed. So on all fingers of my left hand, I was experiencing pain. Joint, ligaments, nerves, cells, bones in the area of the hands. Be healed. It was so painful that, you know, a simple thing as my hair up was quite painful. During prayer, I felt 
a man's feet. I felt as if my hands were being held. I felt as well a cooling sensation. I am able to go about my daily activities pain-free. I am able to make a proper fist, which was also something that was hard for me to do. I also want to say thank you to Basa Ivan and everyone that was present in the live stream that was praying on my behalf. Amen. So on Fridays, I minister on I minister online, Facebook, YouTube, and then we have ministry on Zoom. Uh, Risha was located in India, and so if you would like to be part of that, if we can put the next slide up, uh, you scan that QR code, you can get access to um, more information that goes to the website. You can go into social media um, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, and then if you'd like to receive prayer and I'll be a part of Friday Fire. You're more than welcome to. And yeah. Next testimony, please. Years, I've been really struggling with pain in my right wrist and I, it was keeping me from performing of all of the things I should be doing with my right hand. And I'm in the dental field now and this is my money maker. This is, you know, you need your right hand for anything in life. And um, it was really getting in the way of my life and I've gotten steroid injections. I've had different things done to my wrist um, through medicine and nothing was able to heal it completely and I just kind of kept living with this in my life kind of just adapting to things and then um, I uh, there was a prayer for healing at the conference and I thought why not I'll go in and get prayed for and immediately after that prayer I have never in my life had an issue with my right hand with my wrist again so I'm believing that God can heal anything here today so, can we play the next one? Amen. And the last video we're going to watch, before we play it, can we pause it real quick? Uh, the last video I wanted to share, this is a really powerful testimony of a five-year-old boy in Mexico City healed. Um, it was around, around COVID time, we did a mission trip to Mexico City, and it was a five-year-old boy, and he had braces on his leg. Um, um, he had this deformity from birth. It was a deliverance service night, kind of similar like what we had yesterday. And I was praying for for uh, somebody over here. Pastor Lana comes up. He says, Ivan, I want you to go to pray for somebody. Um, she's like, this one is yours. So I, I come over there, and he's already sitting sitting in the chair. And the back story of it, they were, in, they were in the back. And somebody from the team comes up to them and says, hey, can we pray for that little boy? And the parents are like, no, we're scared. <laughs> Why are you scared? We're scared of the white man. <laughs> don't, don't be scared. We'll be with you. And, and so that they came to the front, and, uh, and, and we just prayed for him. We did what we did, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, what's next? Well, probably need to take the brace off. Okay, I'll take the brace off. <laughs> what's next? Well, he probably has to walk, but I'm like, I'm not taking him out. <laughs> if he's going to have to walk, he's going to have to do it himself. So I'm like, and... Next thing you know, he gets out, and I'm like, whoa, okay. 
And it's, let's just watch what happens. Can we just take 30 seconds and just give God all the glory? <laughs> Father, we worship you. We give you all the glory. Glory belongs to you. God, we worship you. We adore you. Thank you, Lord, for every kindness, every mercy, Lord. God, we thank you for everything you've done and you're going to do, God. To you and you alone be all the glory. We worship you. We give you the praise in Jesus' precious, mighty name. Amen. 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 I want us to just jump in. Yesterday was what, three or four hours we were here? <laughs> Lord have mercy on us. I want us to ask, a, I, want, I want to ask you a church, a question. I want you to respond back to me. Where is Jesus right now? Huh? Huh? In our hearts? Where else? Huh. Here. Presence is here. Two or more. He's there. Okay. Well, I want to say this. Jesus is not here. <laughs> Jesus is not here. Now, before you stone me, <laughs> before we, you stone me, why don't we look at Scripture? You know, Jesus was on earth at one point. Acts chapter 7, verse 56 says this, Philip gazed up into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Behold, and he said, behold. I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Romans 8.38 says, Jesus, Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God. Hebrews 10.12 says, but when Christ has offered up for all, all time a single sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God. Revelation 3.21, sat down with my Father on his throne. Acts 1, 9, tw one, Acts 1, chapter 9, Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Now when he had spoken these things while they were watching, he was taken up and a cloud received them out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel who, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from, from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So, Jesus used to be on earth. He used to, he used to walk on earth, but right now, he's at the right hand of God. Amen. Now, 
since Jesus is not here, who's here? <laughs> Amen. You know, there was a man of God, he went to heaven. He saw, he saw David, Paul, and other men of the Bible. And he saw Jesus, he saw the Father, and he's, he's like, where's Holy Spirit? He's on earth. Duh. You see, most people in the church, they're very familiar with the person of Jesus. But Holy Spirit, who are you? Now, we can't have a relationship with Jesus apart from the Holy Spirit. You see, it's, it's one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. But I want you to catch something. You see, the Pharisees in the Old Testament, not in the Old Testament, but when Jesus was around, they knew God the Father, or, or they claimed to know, or they claimed, they said that they knew God the Father. But when Jesus showed up, he's like, God we know, but Jesus, who are you? And many people in the church, Jesus they know, but Holy Spirit, who are you? Now, Jesus, when he walked on earth, he was the most important person on the face of the earth. Do you agree? You know, those that honored him received from him. Those that dishonored him probably just didn't receive from him. I want us to look at a story real, real quick at Luke chapter 5 verse 17. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching, that's Jesus, that there was Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come from every town of Galilee, Judea, and, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Catch this. When the, pres when the power of the Lord was present to heal them, that means more than one person needed healing in their body. Okay? Are you with me? So some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on the mat through the, the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friends, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew their thoughts. Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed men, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Now, why was only one person healed when the power of the Lord was present to heal them. You see, the Pharisees, they just dishonored Jesus in their thoughts. Okay? And they didn't receive from Jesus. But Jesus, he was very easy to be dishonored because you can see him, right? But Holy Spirit, right now, you can't see him with the physical eye. Are you with me? So if, if Jesus was easily dishonored or easily shut down or however you want to put the wording on it, Holy Spirit, we can easily, even how much more can he be uh, grieved and all, all, all of the above? So if hope... If Holy Spirit is, he, is here on earth, can you agree that he is the most important person on this earth? Now talk to me. Because when Jesus walked on earth, he was the most important person. But right now he's not here. Holy Spirit's here and he's the most important person. Now, now. If Holy Spirit was the mo is the most important 
person right now, and if Holy Spirit came to your house, where would you put Holy Spirit? Would you say, Holy Spirit, come here, I, I got this great basement. I got this great basement, you know, you know, there's my garage, I got, I got a little bit of, you know, I got this shed, you know, there's, it's, you know. Or would, would, he, would, would we give him the best part of our home? You know, those of us that res- desire to receive from God, if we learn how to honor the Holy Spirit, I think we would receive so much more. Hmm? Now, don't get me wrong. Holy Spirit is so patient. He works on us, and it's his job to convict and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of people, maybe they dishonor him or maybe... By default, they dishonor him because they don't know that he is actually a person. They think that maybe he's a force or he's a fire or he's a dove or he's a a flame or whatever picture you, oil or whatever, you know, he's some some kind of, you know, and they don't know that he's actually one of the persons of the Godhead. He's a person. Now, let's look into the word of God to see how. That Holy Spirit is a person. If you look at Romans chapter 8 verse 27, it says this. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. So, Holy Spirit has a mind. Romans 15, 30. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to join me in earnest prayer to God on my behalf. Ephesians 4, 30, it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit has emotions. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11 says this, but one and the same Spirit works all of these things, distributing gifts to each one individually as he wills. Acts 15, 28 says, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit. Acts 13, 2 says, appoint Barnabas and Saul to do the work for which I have chosen them. So, Holy Spirit has a will and has the ability to choose. Hebrews 10, 29 says, how much more severe punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the Spirit of grace? So, Holy Spirit can be insulted. Acts chapter 5, verse 3, and Peter said to him, said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? So, Holy Spirit can be lied to. Acts chapter 13, verse 2, it says, you stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit can be resisted. Now, praise the Lord. (laughs) You see, you see, just because the Bible says the Holy Spirit descended as a dove doesn't make the Holy Spirit a dove. Just because the Bible says there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind doesn't make the Holy Spirit a sound or a wind. Just because the Bible says there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and sat one upon each one of them doesn't make Holy Spirit a fire. Just because oil, water that represents Holy Spirit doesn't make Holy Spirit oil and water. For example... If I said, she ran like a horse, does that make her a horse? Huh? Or if he said, he works like an ox, does that make him an ox? So just because the Bible says the Holy Spirit descended like a fire or he he came like the wind, Maybe it could be some of the attributes, that, but that doesn't make Holy Spirit wind, fire, oil, or whatever it is. Because let me tell you something. We cannot have a relationship with fire. 
You cannot have a relationship with wind. You cannot talk to, you cannot talk to uh, wood or whatever, how, whatever element you, you put. That element doesn't speak back. Okay? But a person will communicate back. I want us to look at 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11. And he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after a fire, a still small voice. So, so it was when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in the mantle and he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? So. Hello, can anybody hear me? Hello. Fire, the walls don't talk back to us like that. It's probably somebody behind the wall. So, Holy Spirit, He's a person. And in order for us to understand more of the Holy Spirit, we have to understand, first of all, that He's a person. He's not an it, okay? He's not an it. He's a person. Now, the Holy Spirit, He's such a gentleman. He's, he's the biggest gentleman ever. He doesn't talk about himself. He always points to Jesus. Such, I mean, if you talk about unselfish, mighty, awesome, powerful, but he doesn't talk about himself. Always points to Jesus. He doesn't boast about himself. Look what, look what John 16, verse 13, 14 says. It says, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. We cannot have a relationship with Jesus apart from the Holy Spirit. Now, if you understand that. It'd be wise for you to know how to honor him, host him, host the Holy Ghost book. How to honor him because we are the temples of what? Uh huh. And we have a relationship with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Now, Let's go to this scripture. I love this scripture. John chapter 16, verse 17. No, John chapter 16, verse 7 says these words. Nevertheless, this is Jesus saying to his disciples. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. If I don't go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Do you know what Jesus just said to his disciples? Hey, guys. It's better for you that I, Jesus, go away. Now, Peter's probably thinking, Jesus, what did you eat today that you're talking like this? Do you remember the time, Jesus, that you fed the 5,000s when there was only like two loaves and five, uh, whatever, how much bread there was and fish? Do you remember the time where um, I walked on water and I started sinking and you pulled me out and now you're telling me it's better that I, you know, Jesus goes away. It's better for us. <laughs> Do you remember the time, all the miracles we've seen and all the times that you uh, helped, you know, we didn't lack anything. And now you're saying it's better that I, that Jesus goes away. <laughs> now, let's talk about this. If Jesus was still here on earth, okay, Let's say physically. And you and I wanted to talk to him. Well, we would have to fly to Israel. Right now, it's probably not a good time to go there. And we would have to get in line because Jesus came to the, gen to the Jews first. Me and you, 
We're Gentiles. I mean, I did that 23 ancestry thingy. I only got like 3% Jewish. All I only need is a drop of blood. <laughs> anyways, I don't even know how, how accurate those things are. But anyways, me and you, we're considered Gentiles. So we're second class. So if you wanted to talk to Jesus, you would get in line. And the line would be very big. Because you know what? Peter, that big mouth guy that talks a lot, he'd be yapping away. And you know, Jesus would have to sleep eight hours a day. He would have to eat. He'd take break. You remember that when he was at Samaria with at the woman at the well? He was tired because he was in the body. So what Jesus was saying, it is to your advantage that I go. Because if I don't go, the helper, the paraclete, Holy Spirit won't come. And you know what? He's going he's gonna to be just like, he's just like me. And you know, check this out. Jesus himself was filled with the Holy Spirit and led by the, was led by the Holy Spirit to model it to you and to me how to make it in this world. He himself, because he was God, but he didn't flow like that as God, even though he, he flowed under being submitted to the Holy Spirit. He was a 100% man. Are you, amen? Amen. So he modeled it to me and you how we can make it on this life, relying and trusting and depending on the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Jesus was saying, it's better for you that I go. Now, let me tell you something. Peter, you know that Peter? That, That big mouth Peter? Peter said this, Jesus, all these disciples of yours, They'll deny you, but me, never. Count on this. And you know, when the pressure in the moment happened, you see, as great as Jesus was in the flesh, he was able to affect his disciples on the outside, but he wasn't able to come inside of them until he was glorified, okay? Through the Holy Spirit. He wasn't able to live through them. Because if you look at the scripture, what it says. John chapter 14, verse 17. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you but will be in you. Meaning, he dwells with you but there's going to be a time where he's going to be in you. So that Peter that's like, I'm never going to deny you. And when the moment of pressure, you know, the crushing, uh, Gepsimania, whatever that, however you call it, pressing of the olive, he was crushed. And you know what? He didn't have the ability on the inside of him to stand up. And he denied Jesus. I'm sure he wanted to, to stand for Jesus, but he just cracked. But look at Peter. After he was filled with the Holy Spirit and led by the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's just a couple chapters after, you know, the book of Acts. A totally different Peter. What changed? Holy Spirit dwelling in him. Boldness, courage. It is better that Jesus leaves. Because you know what? Holy Spirit can talk to every single one of us all around the globe at the same time. At the same time. Amen. John chapter 14, 15 says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, but he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Jesus says, I will not leave you orphans. Now, do you know what an orphan is? Talk to me. An orphan is someone that their parents either disappeared, died, or has nobody to take care of him. That person feels like they got to take care of their own life. Have you ever felt like you have to take care of your own life? Well, Jesus says, I will not leave you orphans. Let me tell you something. 
Don't, you ladies, I need a man, I need a man, I need a man. I can't live without a man. You don't need a man. You need the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come on. Let me tell you something. You don't have to be lonely. Because that man, however great as he is, he can't touch your heart like Holy Spirit can. Now, don't get me wrong. It was God's idea to bring a man and a woman together and, you know, make them one. But he says, I will not leave you orphans. You know, in the Old Testament, Daniel was ten times better than all the other magicians. And you know what? He didn't have, he had an excellent spirit, but I don't think he had the Holy Spirit like we have him. Okay? He prayed three times a day. And he was better than all the rest, all the rest of the magicians or whatever it is. And he rose up four different kingdoms. He rose to the top. Four different kingdoms. Rose to the top. And let me tell you something. Me and you, we are people of the light. We have Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. Holy Spirit can help us in our family, with our business, with our work, with our career, how to raise our children, give us wisdom in this and that and this. Just as Jesus had supernatural wisdom, we can have access to that also. But we need to learn how to host the Holy Ghost. Get the book. I've been telling you. You have to learn how to honor him, how to reverence him because he's a person and he can be easily ignored. And 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 14 says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray to God the Father. We pray to Jesus, but we are to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Okay? We are to have communion with the Holy Spirit. We are to talk to the Spirit. Okay? If you want to walk in the Holy Spirit, talk to the Holy Spirit. Talk to Him. How, much, how many of us are we're driving the car? Holy Spirit's there, but we ain't talking to Him. And you know, He's a gentleman. If you don't want to talk to Him, He ain't going to like, he's, He might not push it. Why don't you just drive the car? Holy Spirit, how are you doing? For reals. Do you know that what kind of, you know what kind of relationship the early church had? It's, they had this kind of relationship. It seemed good to us and the Holy Spirit, and they made a decision. They had such a close relationship with the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you something. When the Holy Spirit came, it was the birth of the church. God didn't give the church a program. God gave the church a person. His name was Holy Spirit. You know, one man of God says this, you know, in America, he says, he said this, you know, you know, I'm surprised how, how 90% of the things you guys do here in America, you guys can do without Holy Spirit. And we're not talking about this church, there's some other churches over there. The first church, they were dependent on the Holy Spirit. You, you, you Read the book of Acts. They were led by the Spirit. They did things by the Spirit because um, there was no other way. They didn't have the lights. Praise God for all that. It helps us with our flesh, you know, kind of like to, and it, you know, hey, I'm for that. I'm a young person. I'm not that old. But they had the person of the Holy Spirit, and that is who they had a relationship with, and, and God led them. You know, look at Apostle Paul. He, he was going into one place, and the Holy Spirit said, don't go there. It was forbidden by the Spirit to go there. Go over there. How many of us are making decisions, choices in life apart from Holy Spirit? And then we wonder why. God, you left me. God, why are you here? You made a decision in the flesh, and you're blaming God. Come on. I'm being real. I'm going to fly out tomorrow. You're not going to see me no more. (laughs) 
To be led by the Holy Spirit, one must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit and he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Ephesians 5.18 says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, wine is a counterfeit of the real deal. So when people drink alcohol, wine, whatever, whatever it is, they get intoxicated, and you know what? They make bad decisions. Their judgment goes off. They, they make bad decisions, get into fights and all the kind of junk, and they, they make bad decisions. But when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you will make good decisions. You will make right decisions. You will make holy decisions. So if you want to be led by the Holy Spirit, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Those of you that haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, or those of you that are like, you know what, I don't need Holy Spirit. It's like this. It's like saying like this. You know, right now there's a war between Israel and the Palestines. It's, it's saying like this. You're, in the soldier, you're a soldier in the army. Your commander comes, soldier, take this bazooka. And the soldier goes, nah, 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 my pocket knife is good. That's exactly what we're, what we're doing when we say no to the Holy Spirit, no to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because you're saying that your understanding is enough. My Bible says don't lean on your own understanding. Let me tell you something. Try to wrap your mind around how is it possible to walk on water. Try to wrap your mind, how is it possible to see people raised from the dead, to see people healed, or however it is, supernatural Wrap your mind. Go ahead. Spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it. Just keep spinning it. How is it possible? It's, it's of the Spirit. And when God is offering you the Holy Spirit, when God is offering you, soldier, take this bazooka, okay? Holy Spirit's not a bazooka, but I'm just making an analogy to help us understand. Soldier, take this bazooka because you know what? There's them demons, them strongholds, and they need to be blasted. Okay, there, there's this, you got to take this firepower because the Bible says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. Why are you satisfied without power? But it's through the Holy Spirit. It's being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the birth of the church happened when the Holy Spirit came. So let's look at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 2, two verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, there were, they were all in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Now, it's going to bur burst some religious bubble right here. Did you know that they were filled with the Holy Spirit when they were sitting? Probably never saw that in the Bible, huh? It's not the position of your outside. It's the position in, in the inside. Look, at it. I'm, not make, I'm not making it up. There appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each one of them. But before that, it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm a loud guy, guy. I'm a loud guy. I, I love loud, you know. The louder the better. My wife on the other side, she's a quiet one, you know. She received the baptism of the Holy Spirit quietly. <laughs> Praise God. But they were sitting when the Holy Spirit came. So that's just a rabbit, you know, rabbit trail. Anyways. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterances. Look what my Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, in the upper room, did you know that when, when Jesus uh, was raised up from the dead, in, in Corinthians, it says he appeared... To more than 500 people. 500 people. Okay? But why in the upper room there was only 120? Why? 
you know, those, I don't know what those other people were thinking, you know, I'm going to go start a church. <laughs> I'm going to go cast out demons. I'm going to go heal the sick. And those other ones were like, the 120 ones, they were like, we're going to stay here because the master said, stay here and wait. Because he said, don't do anything. Don't go anywhere. Don't start a church. Don't go cast out demons until you're endued with power, filled with the Holy Spirit. And then history happened. And my Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterances. So there was men, there was female, and they were all filled. It wasn't just for the apostles or for the elite ones. Because let me tell you something. Uh, why would God want to give the, His Holy Spirit only to the elite ones where we all need Him? We all need him. It's not, that, it's not the pastor that only has the, temp, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit, his body. Each one of us are temples. And them temples need to be filled. Not with demons. That we, we casted them out yesterday. The only spirit you need to be filled with is the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to quickly touch on this tongues part. Because there's a lot of, like, confusion in this part. Well, my, the Bible says, are, are all, do all speak in tongues? Are you with me? So, quickly, real quick. There are four diversities in speaking in tongues. Four. One of them is for a prayer language that, that I believe God gives every single believer where they receive it, it. It's not up to God. God made it available for every believer. It's... To build yourself up. When you speak in tongues, you're building yourself up. It's a prayer language where you connect to God on another level. Let me tell you, Apostle Paul says this. I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. And you know what? He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And you know what, Apostle Paul? He was never a physical disciple of Jesus. Physically, like Peter, James, John, and, uh, and, and the other twelve. He never physically walked with Jesus, but he says, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. And you know what? He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He had so much revelation. Um, he had so much revelation. He went to this, this heaven. He, he got revelation that he's not even allowed to talk about. He had so much revelation that a thorn in the flesh will have to be given to him to keep him humble. But he says, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. And those of you guys that received the gift of tongues... And you ain't using it. You just put it on a trophy and says, okay, what's next in my Christian life? It's given to you to build yourself. You need to be built up. My Bible says he who speaks in tongues edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. You got to build yourself up before you build others up. So this tongue is for personal edification, your prayer language that you can con connect to God. And I believe this is for every single person. And those of you that haven't received that, today should be your day. You should hunger and thirst to receive that. Now the other three, we're going to talk about them real quick, is tongues for interpretation. Like when somebody comes up, speaks in tongues, or another person interprets. Now that happens for ministry. God is very selective in who he chooses to be in ministry, like the pastor, prophet, we don't choose. God chooses. And so in ministry gifts, God is selective who he gives the tongues to for interpretation, for ministry-wise. But the prayer language is for all of us. Now the next two is tongues for intercession. For example, anybody had deep groanings and you just prayed, 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 prayed? Anybody had that here? Lift up your hands. Okay. You know what? There might be like this big accident happening. Devil's planning an accident, right? And God's like, look, who can I wake up? Who can I wake up that can, you know, pray through this? And he wakes up a believer, and this person has these, this urge to pray in tongues in a deep way. And they just release it, release it, release it. They pray, pray, and that God sends supernatural angels over there in this accident and spirit. Now, this is also when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Meaning, it's not when we choose that we want to groan in these deep languages, okay? It's when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And the other one is, is a sign to the unbeliever, kind of when, what happened in the book of Acts where, where they spoke in tongues and it's in different languages. The people that were around them were in different languages. I heard a story. Somebody came into the bathroom, started speaking in tongues. There was somebody in the bathroom that, um, like, do you know what you just said? He's like, no. <laughs> I just uh, released what felt good. <laughs> and, uh, 
And he's like, no, you spoke this, 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 this. I heard a story that, I don't know, during World War II or one, Germans captured a town and they were going to burn that, this city down, this church down or whatever it is. And there's a lady, she had an unction to speak in tongues. She stands up and starts speaking in tongues. And she speaks to this German officer that only he knew some secrets. And because of that, that town was spared or that, that place was spared. So it's not something when, when we... That when we want this, when Holy Spirit comes upon us. And so when we clump them all together like in one, that everybody speaks in tongues. Now, that's where the confusion comes. And then you got these doctrines and all these other stuff. But my Bible, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues. And one of the, the evidences of being filled with the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. For example, if there's a car crash and you're a witness to the car crash... If you didn't see the car, you're not a witness. Okay? Does that make sense? One of the evidences, I can take you through the Bible and show you, but I don't have time, is one of the evidence of a person being filled with the Holy Spirit, they speak in tongues. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean that Holy Spirit, that you don't have a relationship with Jesus. It's just, it's just, you just need a desire for a deeper encounter with him okay John chapter 7 verse 37 says this on the last day the great day of the feast Jesus stood up and cried saying if anyone thirsts let him come to me and drink he who believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive for Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Can I invite the worship team up front? Jesus says these words, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And out of his innermost being, out of his depths, belly, or out of his deep place will flow rivers of living water. Can you throw me a water? So, those of you that desire to be filled with Holy Spirit, your first step is to ask, is to desire. God is a gentleman. He pours out his spirit on the hungry and the thirsty. Your second step is to drink. come to Jesus and drink. I've seen many people come to the front And they're not drinking. Their their mouth is closed. If this was alcohol, which is not, it's water. We're in church. Unless Jesus would turn it into wine. If this was alcohol, how can this water go inside of me? What's my first step? Open. Open your mouth. Psalms says, open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Jesus says, come to me and drink. So you got to open your mouth, and you got to, if your mouth is closed, I don't care how much water I'll pour, but it ain't going to go inside of me. You got to open your mouth wide. A lot of times when people come to the front, they are, uh, They're not focusing on God. They're focusing on some kind of manifestations. Just kind of like, like, you know, we read the story in Elijah, the earthquake, the fire. Let me tell you something. If the manifestation comes or it doesn't come, keep your eyes on God. When you put your eyes on Him, you hunger for Him, you open up your heart. Your heart is your contact point where you meet God, your heart. You want to open your heart wide. Open your mouth wide. Ask God, fill me. Let me tell you something. You know that God wants to give you, God wants to fill you more than you actually want to be filled. Because he knows you need him. He knows that this life is difficult. He walked on this earth. He knows that apart from Holy Spirit, we're sheep. We're dumb. Apart from him, we get into this whole, that whole, that bad, rela- bad mistake. He knows that being filled with him, our life is going to be better. He wants to fill you more than you actually want him. 
But he's looking to hunger from you. Do you really want him? He's a lover. He wants to fill you, fill you deep. He wants to encounter you. I believe that God wants to mark people today. I remember that God marking me at the age of 16, 17, 18. I was born in a Christian family. My parents took me to church from a young age. But when I experienced the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, it marked me. On the inside, I was changed. Holy Spirit wants to fill you, mark you, give you life, give you purpose, vision, teach you, guide you. But you got to cultivate, develop a relationship with Him. He can be very easily grieved. He can be insulted. The Bible says, don't grieve the Spirit. He can be insulted the way we treat one another and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, but if anyone asks, desires, thirsts, and hunger, they will be filled. Now, another thing you need to understand is He's the gift of the Father. It's not something that you can earn, okay? Catch. Catch. Huh? See? Look at that. Catch. Ready? Look at that. He's positioning himself, and he simply received. Thank you. Catch. Look at that. Look at that. She's just positioned. She's ready. She's ready. She doesn't have to run. She doesn't have to walk up. 12 steps go down, 12 steps go up, 12 steps go down, and then God's going to give it to her. No, position yourself, God, receive. It's a gift. It's not, it's not something you earn. <laughs> my friend, when we were praying to receive the baptism of the Holy, Holy Spirit, my friend, we're at a, a youth camp, and there was this guy, we considered him a heathen. <laughs> And he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit first. And my, God, my friend's like, him? Where did you get it? <laughs> that spot right there. And he goes over there. <laughs> but my point is this. It's not because of your righteousness or good works and all that kind of stuff that you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift of the Father. Yes, you have to ask God to wash you, cleanse you, purify you. Because just like a dove, he wants to come into that clean place. But he wants to fill you more than you want him. I want to invite everyone to stand. Before we pray for the encounter with the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God, a touch from God. I want us to come to God. And I want us to repent. And this is how I want us to repent. If there's any way that we have insulted, grieved the Holy Spirit, I want us to ask the Holy Spirit to forgive us. You know, sometimes when we judge somebody, maybe we don't understand somebody operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and we say, that's not of God. Or we don't understand something, the moves of the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes He can move in... in, in and uh, in our natural mind, it can be a little offensive. And, or sometimes we can say this to this preacher, but that preacher can be moving in the Holy Spirit. And I want us to repent if we grieve them, you know, when, when we talk sharply to each other. Or however, however it is, because Holy Spirit, He's very sensitive. But I believe He wants to be... He wants to dwell in us. Because God never wanted to dwell in a box. He always wanted to dwell in the human heart. That is his resting place. From the very, even very beginning of the garden, he wants to be with us. He loves us. But I want us to come to the Lord and ask, ask us, Holy Spirit, and you talk to him like, you talk to him right now, and, and you ask him, Holy Spirit, if there's any way I grieved you, angered you, insulted you, maybe I resisted you, lied, or whatever it is, I want you to come to Holy Spirit and ask Him to forgive you. He will. He will.
Open up your heart. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you. Come on, lift up your hunger, Tim. Lift up your hunger, Tim. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Come on, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. Tell him. Oh, it 
on, church. Get hungry for him. Get hungry for him. Pour it out. to be a, a cry coming from the depths of our heart do you really want to be filled by him there's got to be a cry a cry release a cry unto God let it be your heart's desire he will fill I know God will fill people today but can you open up your heart wide enough can you open up from the depths of your spirit can you cry out? Can you, can you show him how much you want him? He wants you a lot. But can you open up your heart and release that cry from within your heart? When we sing this song, I want more, is it coming from your mind or is it coming from the depths of within you? Because he will fill those that are hungry today. Those that are thirsty today will be filled. I want more of you, God. I want more of 
open up your hearts. Don't focus on anybody but the Lord. Don't focus on anybody but Him. Come on, open up your heart. Open up your heart. Open up your heart. to ask the Lord for a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. I know we asked Him to forgive us, and I believe that He was gracious to do that. But right now, I want you to ask God, God, I want to have a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. Would you help me to honor Him? Holy Spirit, would you teach me to host you? Would you teach me to partner with you every day of my life? He wants to be your greatest companion, your greatest partner. He wants to go with you to school. He wants to go to, with you to work. He wants to go with, to you to church, with church. He wants to do ministry with you, okay? He wants to do every area of life together. You're never meant to do life on your, by yourself. He's there. He's there to help you with, with every day, not just churchy stuff. He's there to help you with your business. He's there to help you with your children. Holy Spirit is there to help you. So right now, let's ask the Lord for a deeper relationship with Him. Father, right now we're just asking you, would you give us the grace to host the Holy Ghost? Holy Spirit, would you teach us, would you guide us? We're asking for a deeper relationship with you. Holy Spirit, we desire to host you. We humble ourselves and we know that apart from you, we have man-made religion. God, we so desperately need you. Help us to host you, Holy Ghost. We want to be filled with you. We want to be led by you. So right now we're asking you, God, for a deeper relationship with you, each one of us, oh God. 
including myself, I want a deeper relationship with you, Holy Spirit. I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. I want to have communion with you. Would you teach me? Would you guide me, O oh Holy Spirit? Would you fill me, O oh God? Would you fill me, O oh God? Would you fill me afresh in Jesus' name? Come on. I want each one of us to begin to ask Holy Spirit to fill you. Holy Spirit to fill you. Those of you in the building that are already baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want, I want you to lift up a voice right now. We're going to all together corporately, we're going to pray in the Holy Spirit. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on,
right now. Those of you that are yet to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, if, if that is your desire, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit with the gift of speaking in tongues, I want you to come up right here in the front. You haven't received your prayer language yet. Line up, line up, line up. If you hunger, you thirst, stand up, stand up, don't kneel, stand up. Jesus says, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And out of his bellies will flow rivers of living water. According to the word of God, Jesus is the one that baptizes us into the Holy Spirit. I don't know how that happens. He's in heaven, but he does it. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. So right now we're going to ask him. Those of you that desire this, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, according to your word. You said, if anyone thirsts, let, let him come to you and drink. Jesus, right now, I'm coming to you, and I ask you, baptize me in your rivers of the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, just as they did in the, uh, the book of Acts. Right now. I open up my heart. I surrender myself to you. I let go of any of my agenda. Holy Spirit, come, fill me, baptize me, baptize me, baptize me me in Jesus' name. So, right now we're going to sing that song, fire, fall down, and then if I can have a couple of the ministers whoever you designate, be ready. I want you to open up your hearts. And when we lay hands on you, remember, if you feel something bubble up within you, just yield, yield, okay? Yield and just speak it by faith. Speak it by faith. Whatever comes, let it flow. Don't focus on any manifestations. Focus on Him. However He touches you, let it be, okay? Don't let your mind overthink it because our mind sometimes can try to figure it out just open up your heart open up your spirit we're gonna lay hands on you we're gonna say we're gonna sing the song fire fire and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come and lay hands on you okay but right now open up your heart fire fall down fire fall down on us we pray as we seek fire fall down fire fall down on us we pray as we seek fire fall down fire fall down on us we Fire, fall down, fire, fall down, on us we pray. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Lift up your hands to the Lord. I'm going to count to three, and then we're going we're gonna to say fire, fire, fire three times. And then the ministers are going to come and lay hands, and then worship's going to keep playing. Remember, don't keep your mouth closed. Open it wide. Whatever, whatever syllabus comes, you yield to it. You speak it out in faith. Are you ready? I can't hear you. Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two. I want you to yell fire, fire at the top of your voice as loud as you can. One, two, three. Fire! Fire!
church for way too long we're we're setting our eyes on man I am not your source you're looking to me like I am your source but I'm not Holy Spirit's here you don't need me to lay hands on you you got to open up your heart you got to open up the depths of your heart to him Those that are hungry, he will touch, he will fill. He's not, he's very generous. But you gotta take eyes off of man. Man is not your hero. I am not your hero. I will be gone tomorrow. Where are your eyes? Where does your help come from? Who lives within you? Where's your source? Where's your well? Where are you digging from? If you're waiting for me to do something special, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. But if you open up your heart, you cry out to Him. He will touch you where you are, even if you're in the back. He's looking for a heart. Come on, I know there's more that God wants to do. I know He's not done. Come on, open up your heart. 
seek him. If you seek him with all your heart, you will find it. I know there's more that God wants to do. Come on, there's so much more.
what this is what we're going to do right now. For 60 seconds, we're going to pray in tongues, and then we're going to be quiet, and then we're going to listen. Some people will hear something. Some people will see something. Some people will sense something. And we're going to hear, and we're going to listen. Amen. Amen. So right now, you don't have to be loud. It can just be, you know, normal. You pray in the spirit. And then when I go, shh, you just be silent and we listen. And just the first thing that comes, most likely, is from him. So go ahead, open up your mouth. Hara ba 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 shegi ro 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 bo ro 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 bo ro 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 bo shegi ro 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 shegi ro ba 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 ro 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 Shagira ba 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 da 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 gi ha da ba 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 shagira da 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 ba da 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 gi ro bo 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 do 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 Who heard something? Lift up your hand. You heard something. Lift it up if you heard something. What did you hear? God just said, be still and know that I'm God. Okay. Who else heard something? Lift Lift up your hand. You heard something. You saw something? I saw something. I saw a vision of a, of a bush on fire. That's what I saw. Okay. Who heard something? Lift up your hands. Come on, don't be shy. What did you hear? It's all well. Say it again. It's all well. Lift up your hands so I can see you. You heard something. Love you with an everlasting love. Okay. I saw clouds lifting away from darkness, and all of a sudden everything was clear and blue. The skies were blue. Okay. What What did you see? What did you hear? I heard that God said to be quiet and still. Okay. Anybody else? You heard something. I heard God said, sorry, uh, I heard God said that the battle, been, the battle that I was fighting has been won already. Amen. Anybody saw something? I heard, um, I heard when you were talking that you were saying God, your people loves you. Anybody saw something? Felt God and touched my heart and stay still. He said to me, He touched my heart. Amen. Anybody else you felt like you received something from the Lord, real quick? He 
overwhelming peace of God despite the storms an overwhelming peace. That's what he has for us this day. Amen. I heard him say that I love you and you're free. I just re was remembering a dream from many, many years ago where he was giving a gift and he was like reaching down and giving a package a gift. So I was receiving it. <laughs> Peace throughout the whole service. Amen. I saw a vision of what I think was an angel. He had a light pink kind of orange uh, robe and he was walking very fast through the crowds looking for someone in specific. I don't know who he was looking for but I know he was moving very very fast looking for someone in specific. Church, I want to let you know that our God communicates with us. Amen. The Bible says in the last days you will pour out his spirit and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and dreams. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. God communicates. We just need to listen. Amen. God's not done. I want us to pray for healing. Those of you, you have physical pain in your body, you have a lump, you have a cyst, doctor said you have a problem, I want you to lift up your right hand right now. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up and hold it up. If anybody that your hand is not lifted, I want you to come up to them and I want you to ask him what the problem is and ask him if it's okay to lay hands on you. But but don't pray yet. We're going to pray together. We're going to release our faith. And we're going to be believing for God to touch that part of the body. Amen. Come on quickly. Find a hand. Find a hand. Find a hand. There's, there's hands in the back. If somebody approached you, lift your hands down. That way, that way we know that uh, somebody's there. But if nobody's there yet, lift, keep, lift, keep holding your hands. Come on, look around, look around. If there's anybody else, the hands lifted, come up to them. There's somebody in the back. There's a person over there. There's a person way in the back, two people over there. Come on, we're the body of Christ. We have to pray for one another. Keep lifting up, keep, keep your hand up if you still didn't have anybody there. Let's make a declaration. Say, my body. Come on, make a declaration. Say, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is not for sickness. It's not for pain. It's not for torment. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So every abnormality, pain, sickness, whatever name that thing is called, right now, I command you. Leave my body, leave my body, leave my body, leave my body, leave my body in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And right now, I want you to pray a prayer of faith. Release your faith over them. Whatever part that is, is problem, release your faith over them. In Jesus' mighty name, we release our faith over this body. We speak these bones, these muscles, these nerves. Be aligned in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We speak to organs in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We speak to stomachs. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Every back problem, be straight in Jesus' mighty name. I speak to female parts. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Stomachs be restored in Jesus' mighty name. I speak to livers. Be healed. Kidneys be healed. Every cyst disappear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every pain in the back be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Pain in the hips, pain in the shoulders, go in Jesus' name. Every chest pain, go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be 
healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We release our faith over every part of the body in the mighty name of Jesus. We command that pain to go. We command that cyst to go. We command that problem to go. Diabetes, go. Cancer, go. Tumor, go in Jesus' mighty name. Every sick cell, go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be restored back to the original condition. We speak to every part of that body. Be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We speak to every cell. Be normal. Be normal. Be normal. Be normal. Be normal in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We release our faith. Vertebrae be restored. Discs be whole. Every bit of... Every bit be gone in Jesus' mighty name. Father, do what only you can do. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light in Jesus' mighty name. Every chronic pain in the head, we command you to go. Chronic pain, wherever you are, be gone. Lumps disappear in Jesus' name. Every problem in the chest, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Every spirit of infirmity, out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We release our faith over that body. Father, do what only you can do in Jesus' precious mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shh. Amen. 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 Stop. Okay. Those that got prayed for, check your body. Check your body. Check your body. Do something you couldn't do. Check it. Check it. Check it. Check if the pain is there, the lump is there. Test your body. Do something you couldn't do. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Do something you do. Put some pressure on it, push on it, check it, check it, check it. If the pain completely left, lift up your hand if it's gone. We got one, two, anybody else? Check your body. Pain gone? It's gone, come on. Anybody else? Check your body, check your body. Amen. If the pain is gone, quickly run up to the front. I want to hear what happened, and we're going to pray some more. We're not done. We're not done. Quickly, 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 quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. If the pain left your body, run up, run up on the stage. Quickly, come on. The pain's gone? Why are you not coming up here? Come on. We're not done. We're not done. We're not done. The pain gone? What are you doing? Let's go. The pain gone? Come up, come up. You guys, you guys need a special invitation? If you got prayed for and the pain dropped, lift up your hand. It didn't go away, but it dropped. That's you. Who else? Lift up your hand. All right. Those around them, lift up, put their hand again. Uh, those of you that are believing for healing, again, take your right hand, put it on the problem. One more time. We're going to release your faith. Come on, receive it like it's the first time. In Jesus' mighty name, we speak to every condition. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Be restored back to the original condition. Every sickness be gone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we release our, our faith over this body in Jesus Christ. Be healed and be restored. We speak to next be, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. We command every pain, every problem in the neck, be restored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. We command all the pain to go. Father, do what only you can do. We release your faith. Lord, I speak creative miracles in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be restored back to the original condition. Father, do what only you can do in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit. Do what only you can do. Fill that temple. Heal that temple. Touch that body in Jesus' name. We command all the pain to go. Abnormality go. Legs be restored in Jesus' mighty name. Knees be healed in Jesus' name. Be restored back to the original condition in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Check it again. Check it again. Check it again. Check your body one more time. Check it. Put, do something you couldn't do. Check it. Check it. Check it. Check it. 
Check it, check it, check it. If the pain left your body, wave at me. It's gone? Come up here. Anybody else? Wave at me. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it again. If it's gone, come up to the front. Come up to the front if it's gone. It's gone? It's gone? Come, 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 come. Come. All right. Come on. Amen. Come on. All right. All right. We're not done yet. We're going we're gonna to do some more. All right. Those of you that you're still believing, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your Hold it high. Believers, one more time. Put your hands on them again. Come on. Let's go one more round. One more round. One more round. Keep your hand up because I, I want to pray for you too. Fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak to this area of this body. Be restored. We speak to this part of the body. Be healed. Stomachs be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Female organs be restored back to the original condition in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed and be restored in Jesus' mighty name. We command all the abnormalities. Be gone in Jesus' mighty name. Be gone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fire. Be restored back to the original condition. Father, do what only you can do. Let the kingdom of God come into this body. Every part of this body be restored. Be restored. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. We command all that problem, all the sickness be gone in Jesus' name. Father, do what only you can do in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We command all the abnormality to leave the body in Jesus' name. Father, do what only you can do. We speak to this throat. Fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, do what only you can do. Disconnect her from every sickness in Jesus' name. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fire. Fire in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Do what only you can do. Be healed. Be restored. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Can we worship the Lord for a little, for a little bit? Fire. Fire in Jesus' name. Fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in your body. Let every cell align itself. Be normal in this body in Jesus' name. Father, let your anointing locate her case. Fire. Be normal in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we speak to every part of this body. Be restored. Be healed in Jesus' name. Do what only you can do in Jesus' name. Precious Holy Spirit. Be healed. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, command every problem in this body. There is power. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I speak to the spine to be straight. Discs be restored. Nerves be healed in Jesus' mighty name. I speak to the bones and muscles. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command all the pain to go. Father, do what only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name. Be restored back to the original condition. Release your faith. In Jesus' name. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. 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 Break every chain.
Check your body one more time. Test it, test it, test it, test it one more time. Check it, check it one more time. Even if you didn't get prayed for it, check your body. Check your body. Check your body. If that, whatever that thing was, is gone, lift up your hands. It's gone. It's gone. Okay, come up. Come up to the front. It's gone. It's gone. Come. It's gone. It's gone. Come. If it's gone, come up to the front. Don't don't wait for a, a invitation. I want us to do one more round. If you're believing for a miracle in your body, lift up your hands. And this time, we're just going to worship God. We're just going to thank God. But, but them believers that are next to, the, next to him, lay hands on them. And just thank, thank God for the healing that's already done. Okay? Can we just worship God for... Come on, lay hands, lay hands, lay hands, lay hands, lay hands. Check your body, check your body, check your body one more time. Check your body, test it, test it, test it. Push on that part if it hurt it. Check if that cyst, that lump is still there. Do something you couldn't do. Move your head, your neck, your arm, your leg. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. If the pain is gone, lift up your hands. If the pain is gone, lift up your hand. It's gone? Come. Anybody else? It's gone. If it's gone, just run up to the front. Real quick, we're going to uh, hear what God did to these beautiful people. What was the problem you had? Uh, menstrual cycle pain. Menstrual cycle. Yeah, for a very long time. For, for how long? 
Uh, since I was nine. Really? Every month, yeah. It's been really, really a diff difficult battle for me. Uh -huh. And what happened during prayer? And today it was really bad. It kept coming, going, coming, and going. And I just gave it all to God. And I feel that I am healed. Yeah, I feel better. All the little cramp pain that was still there. Do you still have any pain gone. in that part? No. It's Even still a little bit? Gone. No. Church, why don't you stretch your hands? <laughs> Father, we're declaring that her healing is permanent in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May your hand be upon her in Jesus' precious name. What was the problem you had? Um, my neck and shoulders, I had constant pain in them for the past couple um, weeks. What, what happened during prayer? Um, I, he completely healed me. I just, all that pain just it's dropped. Gone. Um, also the head pressure was just You had gone. pressure in your head, yeah. now no more? Uh -huh. Move your neck like this. You don't feel nothing no more? No. Amen. What was the problem you had? Um, my tooth always really hurted. Like for the past couple of months, my tooth has been like hurting really badly. And when we were praying and I started to like feel my tooth around, it didn't really hurt that much. And then as we continued, it stopped hurting um, more and more. Right now, does it hurt? No. Even a little bit? Amen. What was the problem you had? I got two problems. One, I had a... Cataract, you had two problems. Cataract surgery. Uh -huh. And this, I, I've been having problems with my cornea. Uh -huh. And the light, I, I'm always in this. Uh -huh. I c couldn't open my eyes. Now I can open my eyes. So before you couldn't see clearly? No, from this side, I was, I, I, I'm still going to the optometrist because the, my vision... Uh -huh. I'm having problem with my cornea. I okay. was having problem. I couldn't even see the light. And right now you see and the light? I, I could open my eyes. Before you couldn't do that? I was always like this. <laughs> and then I have pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. My pancreas, uh, I take enzymes before I eat and I get real sharp pains in my back. Over and here. what happened during prayer? Uh, it's not hurting no more. It's gone? Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. And um, I couldn't, I couldn't go like this. You couldn't do that? Ask my granddaughter. She couldn't do that? No. I and now she can do? <laughs> Amen. Be careful now she can catch you. <laughs> yes, I can. Yeah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we speak complete restoration over this eye. Complete restoration over this cornea in Jesus' mighty name. Father, let your kingdom come. Do what only you can do in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. What was the problem you had? Shoulder. I Shoulder. had two surgeries, and I wasn't able to lift it over my head. And and lift it over your head now. You couldn't do that? <laughs> now you can? I've been struggling with my shoulder. Amen. You happy? Very happy. Amen. What was the problem you had? My right knee on and off. It will swell up. And... Uh, it would hurt badly, and uh, there were days that I could walk properly. The other days I can't. But right, it was hurting when I came in, but it's not hurting anymore. No more, huh? And there's another situation, but I'm believing that I'm healed. Uh, I was diagnosed with an F3 liver with uh, with with uh, fatty liver. Mm -hmm. Although I can't see my liver, I'm believing that I'm healed. Amen. In Jesus' name, we speak healing virtue into that liver. Be healed and be restored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What was the problem you had? I had muscle, muscle pain in my back as a result of surgery. And um, the doctor said they couldn't do anything about it. So I've been just living with it. And How tonight, long were you living with it? A year. A year. And tonight, um, when I was prayed over, at first it just lessened. And then eventually it just went away. Well, can you do something you couldn't do? Oh, sure. You couldn't do that? Thank you so much. Where would you like me to start? What was the um, problems you had? I had a shoulder replacement. I had a surgery on that two or three times. Total replacement due to a car accident. And when they did the surgery, they, they tore my rotator cuff and they didn't know it. And they sewed me back up and I had to go back in for another surgery. My right shoulder, I just had surgery on my right knee. and broke my kneecap. When that bone broke, it broke even. So I didn't need surgery. I tore my ACL, my meniscus in that knee, and my right shoulder. 
So what yes, happened sir. during prayer? In the sh with this one, I couldn't lift higher than here without hiking my body like this, and I could lift it. Uh -huh. That's a anything, el anything else hurts in your body right now? Lower back a little bit. It hurts right now? A little bit. Stretch your hands, church. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we speak to the spine to be straight, discs to be restored, nerves to be healed. We command that little bit to go in Jesus' name. Let your goodness be revealed in this body in Jesus' name. Bend down as far as you can go. Check it, check it, check it. It still hurts? A little bit. A little bit the same? Yeah. Father, do what only you can do. We release your faith over this back. Be healed and be restored. In Jesus' name. Check one more time. Father, do what only you can do. We command all the pain to go. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Go down the steps and come back. What was the problem you had? I had um, a torsion in my knee, my left knee in May, and still healing, still uh, doing physical therapy and taking medicine new since then. And today is getting better with that. What, what happened after prayer? It's, I, I could move. I could you not couldn't twist. do that? Yeah. And now you can? Yes. Come on, we give God the glory. <laughs> what was the problem you had? So tonight I had a headache, like major headache. Some people who know me know that I have, the Lord actually saved me from a bleeding brain aneurysm four years ago. Wow. And um, I heard his voice, and I just did what he said, go to the emergency room. So... I survived that, but um, they told me I will always have headaches. And tonight was one of those nights where I almost didn't come because of the headache. Mm. But now it's gone. Amen. I have no more headaches. Amen. What was the problem you had? On Tuesday, this past Tuesday, I'm a teacher, and I sit in little wooden chairs so I can be with the little children. And I've sat in those chairs for years. And on Tuesday, I sat in one of these chairs, and it broke. Mm. And I fell on my back. Wow. And my back has been hurting all week mm. to a point of me wondering what was going to be the next step. And this was the next step, that I'm feeling like no pain where it was hurting. No pain. Right in here, no pain. Mm. It's totally wow. released. What was the problem you had? Uh, arthritis pain, knees and my feet. And uh, it was lessening and lessening. I was actually quite content just to have less pain. And Miss Bianca, she said, we can get that down to zero. And was she at the first service today? Uh-huh. Those of you that weren't so should have been there. Terrific. It was just terrific. She was Thank armed. You. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Come on. Hi. What was the problem you had? I'm a five-year thyroid cancer survivor. I went to um, the doctor a couple of weeks ago. And they said it might have transferred to my lungs, and they found a spot on my lungs. But what has freed me today was the noise stopped in my head. She had noise. The noise of fear and doubt. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm here. Amen. 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 Praise God. Is there, any, is there anybody here that you were filled with the Holy Spirit for the first time? You spoke in tongues in the first time today. That's you. Come, come. I want to hear. I want to hear quickly. Anybody else? I know there was more. Is that you too? No, no, here. Anybody else? I know there's one. Two more. Two more. I want to hear two more. You were filled with the Holy Spirit. You spoke in tongues today. You never done that before. Are you just shy? I know there was more. What did you experience today? I experienced speaking in tongues and like God talking in my head, telling me like great things about me. Like I knew God was talking to me in my head and I, and I know I was blessed by him. Amen. How old are you? Uh, 10. 10. Amen. Amen. Father, we just ask that you would use this boy for your glory. Father, I pray that he would see visions as you promised in the word of God. Lord, speak to him like you spoke to Samuel. 
Reveal your visions, your dreams, God. Use him in schools, God. Let him be your mouthpiece, Lord. As he reads his word, speak to him, oh God. Father, we cover him with the blood of the lamb and the fire of the Holy Spirit. Use him, oh God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Anybody, anybody else who are filled with the Holy Spirit for the first time? Boy, girl. Amen. Can we give God... Oh, turn it off. Can we give God some glory, church? Can we give him some praise? Amen. Amen. I pray what we've learned tonight is going to uh, increase our faith, to believe for the healings we've yet to receive. Amen. Amen. That we keep pressing on, we keep asking, we keep uh, praying, we keep uh, standing on the word of God. Amen. Amen. And let's give God some praise. Lord, we just thank you for tonight. Thank you for all you've done. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor, Lord God. Lord, we say, let your kingdom come. Your will be done, Father God. Lord, we will honor you tonight for every good thing that happened tonight, Lord God, knowing it was a gift from you, Lord God. And we rejoice in it. We give you all glory, all honor, and praise. We look forward to tomorrow, what we will learn, what we will encounter, what will happen. Lord God, we lay some praise at your feet now for what you'll do tomorrow, Lord God. In your name we pray. And the church said, amen. 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 We look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 9, 11, or 1. If you are going, returning to your church tomorrow, we pray you take the fire with you. Amen. Praise God.